Let's drink first to all that you're going to put out of your life. And second, to all the happiness that's ahead of us. Fair enough. It's the one and the same gesture. John? I'm sorry, John. But you had to find out sometime. Do you remember we discussed a situation something like this? Well, what are you going to do about it? I recall you talked about it. And I wondered at the time what you were driving at. Now it's all very clear. You expressed your opinion rather forcibly that a husband would be a fool to soil his hands on two unworthy people like, well, like you. That's right. June and I have loved each other for some time. When she gets her divorce, we're, we're going to be married. And we're going to, well, we're going to live quite far away from here. So you see that we've considered your feelings and our plans. So you've made your plans, have you? Well, I've made some plans, too. You're asking me to give up the thing I love most in life. Well, that's not my way. After tonight, perhaps I won't be able to call her mine, but I'm equally sure she'll never be yours. And now, get out. Perhaps you'd better, Ted. Call me in the morning. Good night, Ed. This is the way you lay the love and kindness I have shown you. Your idea of kindness is to leave me by myself while you spend most of the time at the office. Business out of town. It was necessary to supply you with a home, the clothes, the jewels you demanded. You mean I accepted to take the place of love and companionship, which is the right of anyone. You couldn't have been lonesome, or you wouldn't have left me to sit and hold my hands until I had to find companionship somewhere else. If you'd ever had any love in your heart for me at all, you would have tried to tell me. I tried to many times, but you were too stupid to understand. You shut me up, quite at me as if I were a child. You never tried to understand. But now I've found someone who does, and who appreciates me. Well, he'll never have you. He will. I love him. And my own happiness is all that I'm concerned about. That's all you've ever thought of, yourself. Have you ever considered how I've worked for you, slaved for you? How I would suffer? Oh, you're not the only one that suffered. It's been torture every time you put your arms around me and kiss me. But no more. I'm through. I'm leaving. No, you're not. John. Don't. You're mad. You don't realize what you're doing. I realize that if I've got to lose you, there's only one way. Oh. 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 <laughs> Came at the police station. Hello. This is John Forb. 300 West Drive. I've just shot my wife.
Good night, girls. Well, there's the last curtain, Michael. Uh, will you please tell Mr. Merle that I'll be waiting for him at uh, Ricardo's? Just say that I've gone ahead to pick up Miss Warren. All right, Mr. Murray. Good night, sir. Good night, Michael. Well, that's the final curtain this season. And what a performance you gave. Who couldn't? With you for an inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you oh, darling. darling. Let's hurry, dear. I'm starving. I'll bet Mr. you Mr. Murray, I have a message for you. Well, let's have it. Mr. Murray said he'd wait for you at Ricardo's and that he'd go on ahead and pick up a young lady by the name of Miss Warren. All right. You go along to Ricardo's when you're ready, darling, and I'll come along as soon as I can. All right. Hey, old man. Come here. I don't want to be disturbed by anyone tonight. Understand? Yes. Now, wait a minute. Sir, when you speak to me. I use the word sir when I speak to gentlemen. You forget who you're speaking to. No, I don't. I've put up with your insults during the entire run of this show. Not once have you shown an ounce of good breeding. I was an actor, but in my day, actors were scholars and artists, not hams. I thank God this is the last night I'll have to look at you. If you weren't so old, I'd teach you a few manners. Now, you come right ahead. I'm not so old, but what you'll know, you've been somewhere. <laughs> Contemptible skunk. <laughs> Hello, young lady. You here again? What can I do for you now? Please, Michael, I have to see Mr. Merle. I'm afraid that can't be done. He gave strict orders not to be disturbed. I don't see why you keep running after him, Miss Jean. I'm going to see him just once. I have to. There's something I... <laughs> Hello, gang. Hi, Happy. Well, what's all the argument about tonight? Well, it is an hour we're all for, for friends of Jimmy. Oh, what a member matter? And no more murder tonight, uh, Sherlock? No, but there will be if you guys start in on me again. <laughs> so what are you working on a newspaper for? Well, you ought to be a police commissioner, at least. If I help the police solve as many murders as you have, I'd insist on some salaries. You mean... Remuneration. Thanks. Well, I'll tell you. I only do what I can for the everlasting glory of the dear old Chronicle. <laughs> What's the egg for? Well, well when that's uh, uh, crossways, I know I've had an enough. <laughs> Wait a minute, it won't bite you. Come on, sit down. <laughs> Scrambled eggs and bacon, will you? And some toast and coffee? Yes, sir. Merle and his wife. Ask Walt. He keeps up with all the scandal. If, if you, you guys are all wanting to know what I, I know, you buy yourself a, a paper. No. And then it's a, a, a cyclopedia. <laughs> oh, say, Michael, has Mr. Merle left yet? Not yet, sir. I've been right here ever since you left the theater, and he hasn't come out of his dressing room yet. He ought to be ready by this time. 
I'll go get him out so you can lock up and go home. Thank you, Mr. Murray. My wife will be getting anxious. Oh, how is the missus, Michael? She's quite well, thank you. He doesn't answer. He hasn't come out, sir. It's funny that the door's locked. Does he always lock his door while he's changing? Sometimes, sir. He's dead. He strangled with a cord from his own dressing gown. Nobody went in there. Are you sure? Positive. I'll call the police. Hey, operator. Give me the police station. Quick. Well, it's no use. I can't sleep. I'm always afraid I'm missing something. <laughs> Hello, what are you all burn up about? There's a report going around that Alvin Merle's been found murdered. Alvin Merle? Murdered? How? In his dressing room, strangled. Then I'm off. Strangled, eh? In there. Merle's been strangled. How do you know you were strangled? Well, there's a cord tied around his neck and he's dead. We'll have a look. Watch the door. And I don't want anybody to leave here. You get me? I mean you. Yes, sir. Is Captain Blake here yet? Yes, sir. He and Sergeant Jardine are in there now, Doctor. I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. Anything wrong? No, I'm all right. I just heard about Merle being killed. Sort of upset me. Oh, you knew Merle? Yes. I used to be understudy with the company. What right have you to question me? Don't mind him, lady. Why, he's only a reporter. That's right, Jim Ryan of the Chronicle. Jim Ryan. I think I've heard of you. Your fame follows you, even into the alley. Come on, I'll see you out of this mess. I know my way around here. Well, do you mind? I'd like to talk to you. Come on, Jim, she'll wait for you. Won't you, lady? Yes, go ahead. You're, you're not kidding. Why should I? Well, I've got to go inside and see what this is all about. I won't be long. All right. Hello, Danny. Hello, Ryan. Go on in. Laura hasn't been out of my sight from the time Mr. Merle went in there until we found him dead. Hello, Sergeant. How'd you get here? Ah, my instinct for news, old boy. 
But you wouldn't know anything about that. Where did it happen? In there? It did. Let's go. Don't you go away. I'm not through with you yet. Hello, Captain. Hello, Ryan. Glad to see you. This should interest you. Did you get anything? Not a thing. He couldn't have come through here. The window's locked. And barred outside. Door was locked, too. But there he is, strangled. Mm. Cord from his own dressing gown. Suicide? I don't think so. He couldn't have tied the knot so tight. Dead about an hour, Captain. That makes it 11.15. Uh, he came in here at just 11, so our job is to find out just what happened between 11 and 11.15. That cuts it down pretty fine, Captain. It's so simple, it's crazy. Now, you stay put. Sergeant! You want me, Captain? Yes. Okay. And don't you try to beat it, get me? Anything more, Captain? Send your report to the office, Doctor, and get the wagon started. See you in the morning. Okay. Oh, did you get anything out of that doorman? Only that he insisted he never had the door out of his sight. Nobody came in and nobody went out. I've got it. The old man convicted himself. He was here all alone. And if you ask me, he did it. Bravo, Sergeant. You know, you ought to be out in Hollywood writing for the movies. Are you trying to kid me? If you know of any other way it could be done, you tell us. You get me? But really, I think your solution's a bit too easy. Sergeant, bring that stage manager in here. Yes, sir. Hey, you! Come here. What time did you leave the theater tonight? I left just before the final curtain. That was a little before 11 o'clock. So what'd you come back here for? I had an appointment with a lady at Ricardo's restaurant. Mr. Morrow was to have met us there, but when he failed to appear, by 11.30, I came back here to see what was detaining him, and that's when I found him murdered. What time did you arrive at Ricardo's? About uh, five after 11, I should say. What makes you so sure of that? Just a moment, Sergeant. Okay, Captain. Anybody else in your party? Yes, a second lady. She joined us about 11.15. Mrs. Merle? No. Well, who was she? Does uh, that make any difference at this time? Well, how do I know till I find out who she is? Come on now, who was she? Oh, Sam, telephone the lead to the office and tell Pop Beacon I'm staying on the job. All right. What's the idea of bringing me in here as if I were a criminal? Let me alone. Don't you get funny with me. I represent the law. Why were you looking through that window? Is that a crime? The policeman wouldn't let me into the theater. I saw a light in Alvin's dressing room and looked in. Alvin Merle has been murdered. In his dressing room. Were you in the habit of dining out with Alvin Merle? I was. I loved Merle and he loved me. He was going to get a divorce so we could marry. Alvin. Alvin. I, I wouldn't go in there, miss. Will you see the lady home? Yes, I will, Captain. Tomorrow I'd like to talk further with both of you. Very well. Oh. Try and get Mrs. Merrill on the phone. Who, me, Captain? Yes, you. Okay, Captain. Her theater is just next door, Captain. Tried there? Of course. 
never entered my mind. And I saw the sign on the theater as I came in. Ethel Wynne in uh, something or other, but her stage name never occurred to me. Come on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, not you, wait a minute. Now see there, you made me lose them. Danny, did you see a girl around here? Yeah, there's been a lot of them here. I told them all to beat it. What? Where's my number? Well, I gave it to you. Don't get fresh with me, you'll find yourself in the cooler. Get me? Which way did they go? They went down the street there. Is Miss Wynn still here? No, she's going out. No answer at her apartment, Captain. All right, Sergeant. What time did she leave the theater? 11.15 with some gentleman. Who was he? I don't know. He's been hanging around here regular. Besides, I've never been introduced to him. Rather unfortunate, isn't it, Sarge? Between fresh guys and newspaper men, an officer of the law leads a dog's life. Where's Miss Wynn's dressing room? Oh, all right. I'll, I'll show you, Chief. You can beat it now. Say, hey, this is swell. Look what I found. Ralph Burns. Not the big shot gambler. That's him. And isn't that a sweet thing for a big shot to write? Read it, Sarge. You may fall in love yourself someday. You're talking to an officer of the law. <laughs> but it's so sweet. With oodles of love, honey. Sergeant, I could almost kiss you. Well, don't you try it. <laughs> we don't want to talk to Ralph Burns and Ethel Wynn at the office in the morning, so bring him in. Who, me, Captain? Yes, certainly. You leave it to Jardine. Hey, you guys. Stop eating all my food. I'm not feeding the starving Armenians this week. Hello. Oh, hello. You said you wanted to see me, so here I am. This is so much nicer than that alley. But uh, I don't understand how you got here. There's nothing mysterious about that. You told me your name. I looked in the telephone book and came here with the idea of waiting until you got home. There's always a chance of someone being in, so I rang the bell. Well, there was someone here, some of your friends. They let me in all right, but I guess I must have scared them. They all left. There's usually some of the gang hanging around here. This place is getting to be a clubhouse for wayward newspapermen. And will I get kidded tomorrow? I'm, I'm sorry, but the truth is, I wanted to see you even more than you wanted to talk with me. Well, I'm glad of that. Won't you sit down and make yourself comfortable? Thank you. Cigarette? Not now, thanks. May I? Certainly. Have they found out who killed Alvin Merrill? No, not yet. Why? Where did you get this? It was under my door this morning. But why you? I once lost my head over Alvin Merrill. I was with the company when the show first opened. 
Mr. Murray helped me get the part. He was the stage manager? Yes. I've known him a long time, but he had to discharge me. Why? Oh, it was my own fault. Albert Murrow made a fool of me. Or I suppose I made a fool of myself. It was one of those silly, girlish infatuations. Heaven knows I soon got over it. it wasn't soon enough, I'm afraid. Pam Gregory and he were sweethearts. I suppose you've heard about that. Oh, yes. She insisted that I leave the company. That should have ended the whole affair, but it didn't. Last week, Alvin Murrow began calling me up again. It was like him. But I never wanted to see him again. But, uh, you were at the theater tonight. It was that note. I felt I had to warn him. I had to. But he was with Miss Gregory and I couldn't see him. After the theater, I tried again, but it was no use. You're wondering, perhaps, why I'm telling you all this. Well, naturally. It's because I feel you can help me. Oh, I don't know why. But I'm afraid. Afraid? Of what? Oh, I don't know. I have a hunch. And I believe in hunches. Why, you poor kid. Of course I'll do what I can. But why didn't you go to the police? Oh, no. Don't tell them about that note, please. I'm afraid of the police. They'll take me to headquarters and make me say a lot of things I don't mean. You've certainly given this case a new angle. Strange enough as it was. A man strangled in a room that no one entered? It's creepy. Then you're getting this warning. Have you any idea who could have sent this note? Of course, the one that did is the one the police are looking for. Probably a woman, don't you think? Oh, let's not talk about it anymore. I'm just a coward, I guess. You're a brave little girl. I'm sorry, but I must go down to the office. Oh, please don't go. I have to have someone near. But I'm on night duty this week. Now, you run along home. It won't seem so terrible in the morning. Oh, no, I can't. I live alone. It's because I'm afraid to stay there that I came here. All right. You stay right here tonight. And don't open the door to anyone. And I'll come back in the morning and take you to breakfast. You're a peach. And you're very beautiful. Hey, well, what's the, the, the big idea, dear? What? Hey, ain't you good, 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 got a home? Out of my way, boy. I got a date for breakfast. What's the matter with him? Yes, 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 say, Pop. Well, what makes uh, Jim so screwy to the, the, this morning? Search me. Blew in about three. Never saw him so quiet. Moped around his desk for a while, then flopped over and went to sleep. Uh, maybe, maybe he's getting an eye now. Uh, uh, nervous breakdown? Thanks. You're welcome.
Bring Ralph Burns in here. Yes, sir. May I stay? Yes. But let me see your copy before you send it in. Hello, Captain. What's the big idea? Sit down. Thank you. Where were you last night between 11 and 11.15? Oh, springing a fast one, eh? Without giving me a chance to frame an alibi in case I needed one. Well? I'm trying to think, Captain. Did you or did you not leave your apartment at 10 o'clock last night? I did. And you didn't return to 5 o'clock this morning? That's a lot of time to account for. You know everything. You should know where I was last night, Inspector. I'm no inspector. Make enough noise to be one flatty. How long have you known Miss Wynn? You mean Ethel Wynn, the actress? Well, I've heard of her. You can't evade the question, do you or do you not know her? Say, what kind of a game is this? Did you bring me down here to give me the third degree? Come in, Miss Wynn. Won't you both sit down? Mrs. Merle, I'd prefer to call you that if you don't mind. Your husband met his death last night between 11 and 11.15. At that time, you and uh, Mr. Burns were not far from the scene of the uh, accident. Now, there are certain circumstances which require some explanation. Yes. I'd like you to explain why, on the afternoon prior to the accident, a lady and gentleman leased an apartment at the Seton Arms. A lady and gentleman who answered to your descriptions in every detail. In fact, they introduced themselves as Mr. and Mrs. Ralph Burns. Now, I want an explanation of that. Sure you know everything, Captain. I'll explain, Ralph. No use denying what you gentlemen already know. But there are things you do not know. You're wondering, perhaps, why I'm not in tears. Well, the truth is, I'm not sorry he's dead. I'm glad. I haven't loved Alvin Merle for five years. We were only married six. Pam Gregory wasn't the first woman, nor the last. There's been a long line he's been interested in at one time or another. Long ago, I'd ceased to care. The only thing I wanted from him, he, he wouldn't give me my freedom. He said that it would hurt his standing in the profession. I tried to get evidence, but a woman needs a lot of it in this state, and I failed. I've loved Ralph for three years. We've been decent about it. I'm not ashamed of the plans we made yesterday. And now that this has happened, we're going to be married. But I can tell you this much. There's a woman concerned in his death. I know, because I've often felt it in my heart to kill him. I think that'll be all for the present. Of course, you'll not leave the city until the matter's definitely settled. Come, dear. What an actress. What a fool Merle was. A remarkable woman, that. Courage enough to do anything. But I'm wondering. Wondering what, Ryan? Wondering if she committed a crime if her courage wouldn't carry her through to the point of coming here and telling the truth about it. She uh, did tell the truth. I don't think so. Remember, there's one law they never break. The law of self-preservation. That's right, Captain. Well, they admitted everything. In fact, we learned something from the lady. But not all. Just as sure as I'm sitting here, those two people combined or singly are responsible for Merle's death but we need a great deal more tangible evidence. Sergeant, see that they're never out of sight of our men. Yes, sir. The big question in my mind is how the murder was accomplished. Well, I think I could make a pretty fair guess. 
Sure, go on and guess. Guess how a man can strangle somebody without being in the room. You're as nutty as you think I am. Well, I have a hunch that something else weird is going to happen. These crimes are always followed by others of similar nature. Sergeant, get over to that theater again and see if you can get anything else out of that doorman. He's our best chance. Yes, sir. Hey, you. I want to talk to you. I think you've talked enough to me. Don't try to get fresh with me. I'm not getting fresh with you. This affair is no joking matter. Sit down. I talk about standing up. Did or did not something happen yesterday, or even day before yesterday, that concerned Mr. Merle in some way? Did some peculiar or strange person come to visit him? Now that you put it that way, something strange did happen. There was a young woman came in here very excited before the show and insisted on seeing Mr. Merle. Well, why didn't you tell me before? Well, why didn't you ask me before? Because I didn't think of it. Are you trying to make a monkey of the law? Who was this woman? At one time, she was a member of this company. Jean Royce is her name. She came in right after the show, too, trying to see Mr. Merle. I knew I'd get to the bottom of this affair. Leave it to Jardine. I ought to arrest you for withholding important evidence. You do, and I'll give you a punch in the eye. And assault an officer, would you? Well, you keep your hands off me. Where does this dame live? Where are you going? To get her address. Jean Royce, Grotto Apartments, East 55th Street. And don't you try to leave New York. Where do you think I'd go? Jersey, maybe. So long, Sergeant. Well, do you think there'll be a break in the Merle case, Ryan? It's hard to say, Chief. Plenty of suspects, but no arrests yet. Not any dope on it yourself? Well, the Gregory woman might be it. I found out that Merle was about to give her the air. His wife and Burns had plenty of reason. Or it Hello. might have been some other jealous woman. What can the police do? They haven't even found out yet how the crime was committed. Well, it's good front page stuff anyway. Uh, Give us a story on it. Sir, uh, Ryan. Uh, somebody wants us to speak on the mouthpiece. Hello. Oh, hello. I was hoping you would call. Well, what's wrong with that guy? Does or does not Miss Jean Royce live here? She does not. Well, did she or did she not live here at one time or another? I don't know. I'll call the manager. A gentleman in the office to see you. Okay. He'll be right in. Hello? Brought your apartments? No, she don't live here. Well, say, can I help it if she gave you a phone? Can you imagine that? I'm not even trying to. Can I do anything for you? Does or does not Miss Jean Royce live here? She did, but she left a month ago. Did she leave any forwarding address? I'll see. I'm sorry, but she didn't leave word of any kind. Oh. I wish I could give you some information. But that's straight. She left suddenly and gave no forwarding address. Well, if she should suddenly pop in here, you communicate with headquarters. Very good. Jardine's the name. Jardine.
cute place you have here. Suppose you're wondering how it happens I have a penthouse and everything. Well, I haven't asked any questions, have I? No, but I want you to get me straight. After all, our meeting was rather unconventional, you know. Ah, but that makes it all the more interesting. Thanks. You may as well know all about me. After Mother died, Dad married again. So I live in New York on rather a liberal allowance. And I work on the stage because I like it. And that's that. Has anything new turned up? Nothing startling. We have to find out who sent that note, though. Didn't you recognize the handwriting? No. Has that been worrying you, too? Yeah. I haven't been able to get it off my mind, either. Pardon me. Why, you know Mr. Ryan, don't you? Yes, I've had that pleasure. Hello, Murray. How are you tonight? I just uh, called to take you for a drive, Jean, but I guess... I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. Uh, suppose you have dinner with me tomorrow evening. Why, uh, I'd love to. All right, that's an appointment. I'll pick you up about 8 o'clock. Fine. Any new developments in the Merle affair? No, still a closed book. Well, the police will solve it eventually, I guess. It's a very mysterious thing, wasn't it? Quite. Well, Jean, I think I'll run along. Good night, uh, Ryan. Good night, Murray. I'll go to the door with you. Thank you. Does that man mean anything to you, Jean? Of course not, silly. He's just an acquaintance. You're not jealous of him, are you? Well, maybe I am. Why do you keep putting me off, Jean? And you know how much I care for you. I know you do, Frank. You couldn't have done the things you have for me if you didn't. But I can't love you the way you want me to. The feeling just isn't there. Jean, I'll make you love me. Oh, Frank, don't get so dramatic. You've been around the theater so long, you're getting theatrical yourself. I'm sorry, Jean. I'm afraid I did forget myself. This isn't the place for a love scene, is it? No, it isn't. Well, I'll see you tomorrow evening. Good night. Good night. Perhaps I'd better go. Please don't. I don't want to be alone just now. Would it help any if you confided in me? I don't think so. Poor Frank, he gets so tragic. At times, I'm almost afraid of him. Well, he seems to be very much in love with you. Only when he thinks someone else is interested in me. I've never encouraged him, though. On the contrary, I've been rather brutal. He wants me to marry him. But I couldn't. I just couldn't. Well, I, I'm very glad you feel that way about it. So, 
Sometimes I wish I were like one of those little lights, way out in the distance, always twinkling and happy. Perhaps that could be arranged. You know, I think I like you because you don't try to make love to me. I might forget the warning and try sometime. All right, sometime. Just now you can put your arm around me. Let's just be quiet. I want to think. Uh, the, the, the house is uh, fenced. Is Ryan around? He'll be back. Uh, 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 I will. Uh, Hello, Sergeant. And all the boys? Uh, Sarge. Uh, how are you, boys? You know, they got nothing else to do. They come up and drink Jim's liquor. <laughs> Where's Ryan? Did uh, the big ba 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 baboon pull that uh, da Don Wawani on us? He's got a uh, girl. Come on, and then uh, kneel down and c c call you a shot. I think I'll just browse around till Ryan gets here. Uh, there's some uh, liquor over there if you, you want to drink. I never use this stuff. So, uh, well, we have some of the very nice f f fudge in the k k kitchen. Go, go, go ahead. This is uh, that's it. Did I or did I not put a dollar in that pot? You, 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 you did. I that. did. And why is it when I put my money in there and you fellas get your bets out, there's always two bits left for me? You don't stutter when you reach for that money. Yeah, uh, neither did, did, do you. Why do I always throw sevens when I got eights for a point? Uh, uh, bring your own the dice, then. I'm going to. Oh, you are. Well, then I'll bring my dice, too. And believe me, we've got some pippins down at the jug. Hello, Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Let's Hello. get going, will you, Roll. Hiya, Sarge. I'll pay you. Boys treating you right? If we was playing strip poker, I wouldn't have anything left to pin my badge on. Come on, who's... Well, I'm not. I'm going to save enough for breakfast. I've got some news for you, Ryan. What is it? Uh, you, you stop the, 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 those the, the dice again, and you're going to find yourself on the pr pr uh, front. There's a new woman in the Merle case. Who? She used to be in the play. She was stuck on Merle, but she give him the air. He's been after her hot and heavy, but she's been trying to keep away from him. I figured she was scared her new daddy'd get wise and it'd queer the deal. Who is she? Her name's Jean Royce. I traced it to an apartment, but she moved last week. And when I find that dame, I'm going to find out who bumped off Merle. There may be something in what you say. There may be. There is. You know Jardine. with Jim Ryan. Hello? Hello? Jim! Jim! Hello? 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 I want to speak. 
speak with Jim Ryan. Sarge? Well? What? Oh, you found the girl. Yeah. Leave it to Jardine. We found her all right. Up at the Wellington Apartments. Well, it won't do us any good. She's been shot. Now listen, Ryan. Ryan. Hello. Hello. He hung up on me. Now don't worry about Ryan. He'll be there. Yeah, ahead of us. Come on. I'm sorry. Doctor said no one was to go in there. She isn't dead. I don't think so. Say, why'd you hang up on me? I'm sorry, Ryan. How did it happen? She was found there on the floor by the phone. Shot was fired from outside these windows. Has she got a chance? Just a fighting chance, Ryan. See that there's no noise around here. Oh, Doctor. Could I see her for just a moment? I wouldn't advise it. Any little unnecessary noise might cause a change for the worse. Oh, Blake. We've all been a lot of food. What do you mean? The solution has been in front of us all the time. You mean you know who did it? Come clean now. Get me? No, I don't know who did it. But I've got a good idea how it was done. Well? Captain, I'd like to talk to Dr. Waddles. Sergeant, get Dr. Waddles on the phone. Yes, sir. Read that. That last paragraph. Hello, Ben. This is Jardine speaking. I want to talk to Dr. Waddles, quick. Hello? 
Yes? Is the doctor speaking? Hold on a minute. Hello, doctor. Will you give me a resume on the Merle case? I see. Well, have you performed an autopsy? No. There was no reason for it. All right, just a moment. Captain, I think if you'll order an autopsy, you'll get a new angle on this case. Doctor, Blake talking. Something has turned up which demands an examination of the deceased. Yes. Yes, perform an autopsy right away. No, no. No, don't do that. I'll be over at the office before you finish. What's the idea of all this secrecy? Come clean now. What have you found out? Nothing yet. Well, thank you, Captain. Could you arrange to have everyone connected with the case at the theater tomorrow by noon? I think so. Jardine will attend to that. You leave it to Jardine. They'll all be interested to know who committed the murder. Holding out on us, are you? Come on now, spill the beans. I'll be honest with you, Sergeant. I just want time to get my story on the streets while you are making the pinch. And I'll write you in the story. Sergeant, see that everyone's at the theater in the morning. Yes, sir. The old flair for dramatics, eh, Ryan? <laughs> it's all right. I don't blame you. Sorry, Captain, but it has to be that way this time. Could I just look at her? If you'll be quiet. mind, Captain, if I explain the positions of the players during the latter part of the show? Go right ahead. Thank you. You were at the stage door, were you not? Yes, sir. You were at about this part of the set, weren't you, Miss Gregory? You and Mr. Merle had your final scene? That's right. I fell back there. Mr. Merle's last speech, before he took the gun and fired the shot, was read beside the desk. I don't exactly remember the words, and it wouldn't interest you for me to read them from the script. The business is the thing that we're interested in. Mr. Merle, after his last speech, took the gun from the desk, aimed it at Miss Gregory, and fired a shot. He then watched her death scene, put the gun down here, and walked over to the telephone and called the police station. He replaced the phone, walked over to the serving table, reached for the decanter, poured himself a drink, which he drank. Captain, the decanter is gone. Gone? Why, I left orders that nothing was to be disturbed in this theater until after our investigation was over. What do you know about the decanter being gone? And Mr. Murray took it away the morning after the murder. That's a lie. It's true. And don't you call me a liar. Why did you say something about this before? Why didn't you ask me before? I'm used to seeing Mr. Murray about the stage. I didn't think anything of it. He's saying that to shield himself. He was the only person in the theater the night Merle was murdered. And I, I believe he did it. Merle practically met his death in front of an audience that packed this theater. He died from a poison which he drank. The doctor confirmed that today. It was cadeine, a slow poison that acts on the lungs, stops their functioning, the same as strangulation. He was strangled. Didn't I find him with a cord around his neck? I don't know about that. You were the first one in the room. It would only take a moment to slip the cord around his neck and pull it tight. Why, you, you framed me, you sneak. He tried to get the girl I wanted to raise. Hang on, boy. Out the crack. 
There's a streak of maniac in that man. We were lucky nothing more serious happened. You know, I had an idea it was him all the time. There was some truth in that remark of his about my wanting the young lady. He tried to shoot Miss Royce rather than see anyone else have her. He considered Merle responsible for his losing her in the first place. I would have been next. That was fine work, Jim. You're to be commended. It was a description of the business in the play that made me suspicious. And this warning confirmed it. There's nothing more for you to worry about. But I saw Frank outside the window just before I failed. Now just don't talk about it more. You can read all about it in the papers when you're well. I saved a copy for you. Just close your eyes and imagine you're a little light, all twinkling and happy. You're a dear. Is or is not land. <laughs>